Hey, this is Chris Cast, episode 10, season 3. This is the official TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read. And it is thus, while Clue Train Manifesto was about how uh, the internet blogs and social media is and was undermining the messaging, advertising, marketing, and uh, reputation efforts of big business, the same theses in Clue Train Manifesto should be read by anybody who's interested in political, public policy, public health, all these other various and sundry hearts and mind uh, government-based uh, organs need to read the Clue Train Manifesto and replace corporations with governance. Uh, and um, they need to replace blogs with social media, message boards and forums, vlogs, YouTube, and podcasts. I will be doing a series of blog posts about posts about such things, but I wanted to get this off my head, off my chest, before I forgot about it. So there's no notes or anything else like that. I also mention, in addition to Clue Train Manifesto, I mention Naked Conversations, so that might be something you look up as well. Thank you. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Hey, welcome. It's Chris Cass, Season 3, Episode 10. My name's Chris Abraham. Today's episode is about the, uh, prescient, the prescience of the book that came out in 2000 called The Clue Train Manifesto. Hey, Google. What is uh, The Clue Train Manifesto? According to Wikipedia, The Clue Train Manifesto is a work of business literature collaboratively authored by Rick Levine, Christopher Locke, Doc Searles, and David Weinberger. It was first posted to the web in 1999 as a set of 95 theses, and was published as a book in 2000 with the theses extended by seven essays. Hey Google, what is The Clue Train Manifesto about? According to Wikipedia, The Clue Train Manifesto is a work of business literature collaboratively authored by Rick Levine, Christopher Locke, hey Google, Doc Searle. What is the plot of The Clue Train Manifesto? According to Wikipedia, the work examines the impact of the internet on marketing, claiming that conventional marketing techniques are rendered obsolete by the online conversations that consumers have and the companies need to join. So the reason why the Clue Train Manifesto is so prescient that while it was a it is a business book and the uh, theses are supposedly to redefine the uh, control the top down control that uh, brands and products and companies have it, to control their board and their board controlling the media and then the media controlling uh, the consumer, the customer, everything's turned upside down now. So no matter how good your marketing plan is, no matter how good your uh, advertising campaign is, uh, no matter how good your first push is, and no matter how well you uh, create uh, a shill shillow verse where lots and lots of influential people like uh, celebrities, famous people, influencers, and so forth, no matter how much you pay them to play, no matter how much you pay to play, uh, the truth of the matter will bubble up from the bottom because of the internet. The internet turns the pyramid into an inverted pyramid where no matter how much command and control, how many talking points memos, no matter how much you control the media or no matter how much you control uh, marketing, advertising, or even the most influential people on social media, there will still be places that you cannot 
control. And those are places where the conversation will actually happen. And that conversation will be making decisions that you, as a company, might completely be unaware of and should know about. And um, I will tell you now that in 2022, the Clue Train Manifesto needs to be rewritten in the context of how it affects government and the governmental command and control of a population, be that at state and local, be that federally, be that internationally, etc. This is, uh, this has been handled in the past by dismissing anybody who counter messages as a kook, as a conspiracy theorist, as uh, an ignoramus, uh, or as literally a misinformation or disinformation vehicle, generally speaking, a vehicle for uh, an enemy state, system, country, Putin, whatever. So... This has really gotten out of control. I mean, back in 2005, people realized that they had less and less control of the, of the, of the voting uh, biosphere and that, and that the media was having less and less influence when people were sharing their news via Twitter or via text or via Telegram. You know, back in those days, there weren't those things, but people were using... Um, People were communicating behind each other's backs. They were communicating outside of, uh, of the common space. And in 2006, during the 2006 election, this was mostly done by people counter-messaging uh, via, via blogs and then via YouTube, because YouTube was uh, created back in 2005. But more likely, people were using blogs. People were actually creating entire, entire, entire careers surrounding their blog work. Uh, many, most of these original bloggers weren't, in fact, trained journalists at all. Very few of them had gone to J school. And at that point, very few of them were, were being uh, supported by uh, deep state, <laughs> whatever. They, were, they weren't being supported or controlled by by corporations, by government, by State Department, or wherever. Back in 2002, I joined a company called New Media Strategies. Our entire job was twofold. We would go deep into those conversations. And I know I mentioned blogs, but there were also message boards and forums. Back in 2004, 2005, 2002, 1998, 1995, all the way back, there were always BBSs, and after BBSs, there were web-based uh, message boards and forums. The job I did as a cyber striker and analyst at New Media Strategies was to do two things. The first thing was to go in and write reports based on what people were saying behind the backs of brands. Um, the second thing was to then engage in those conversations and then try to change the pH balance from uh, acidity to alkaline. In fact, there were so many bodies assigned to each particular message, boards and, message board and forum that we actually, in many cases, created a quorum on those sites. Now, that is something that doesn't scale beautifully. It works fine for the for the launching of an entire uh, of a new series, you know, Battlestar Galactica on sci-fi, but it's entirely different when it has to do with climate change or a global pandemic, or uh, if it has to do with um, with whether or not an election was stolen or what. Uh, January 6th was, or whether or not Kyle Rittenhouse is, uh, is uh, innocent of murder, or whether or not uh, the, uh, uh, whether or not um, Biden is, is capable of ex uh, executing the office, right? So no matter how 
desperate and hungry and like, come on, you assholes, take the vaccine. It's tested. Uh, mRNA has been tested for years, etc., etc., etc. It doesn't matter because people are having their own conversations and it hasn't for 20 years mattered what credentials you have, what experience you have. It doesn't, it, it's never mattered. The only thing that credentials, PhD, JD, etc., 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 the only th time that matters is when you need to go to, uh, when you need to go to court, I guess. Nobody cares about scientists. The only people who care about scientists are other scientists. The only people who care about doctors are other doctors. Uh, if, if someone sick could get the healing that they needed from anyone else, they would. Uh, they, generally speaking, do not do that much due diligence when it comes to the doctor they go to. Uh, many people consider doctors to just be uh, car mechanics for people. They're not that impressed. They're more impressed by the wealth that they make than by the, the skills that they have. People hate, people hate lawyers. People don't care about PhDs. People do, are never impressed by your master's degree. The only person impressed by your master's degree is you and the HR person. The only person who cares about your PhD is you and possibly your HR person. Um, you can sell a book with a PhD or a JD or an MD. It can give you clout and standing in an environment that cares about clout and standing. But in a world that doesn't care one iota, in the part of the country that does not even have a college education, um, they care more about uh, what their community says, what, their, what the people they respect say. You cannot force someone to respect you. You cannot force someone to fear you. You cannot force someone to like you. And honestly, telling someone you went to Harvard just makes you worse. Telling someone you went to Yale just makes you worse. Telling someone to call you doctor because you earned that title makes you worse. Telling someone that you would never drink that swill makes you worse. Telling someone that you hated high school because of the jocks makes you worse. Everything out of your mouth on NPR, every testimonial you make, everything that you say on a podcast makes you more and more sketch. Um, and because you're a high, uh, a high caste individual, there's a lot of copy on you. So, for example, uh, Fauci has a terrible reputation during uh, the time of AIDS, during HIV AIDS. He has a, he is now being, by the right, being called a Joseph Mengele, right? Is that right? Uh, Joseph Mengele being compared to a Joseph Mengele because he, um, he is experimenting on us. That was not a top-down conversation. That was a bottom-up conversation or that was a counter-messaging conversation. One of the control and uh, control and command strategies, though, is to blame what happens bubbling up from the bottom up, from deep conversation that bottles up. The best thing to do in order to counter that is to say that it's the result of, of foreign actors, bad actors, whether it's from North Korea with regards to hacking or whether it's from uh, Russia with regards to uh, trolling or uh, whether it's with regards to China or Belarus or Hungary or wherever, right? Um, the best thing to do is to say that if memes are happening very literally from the bottom up, if they're bubbling up from a conversation that's happening deep in those message boards, forums, and on those uh, secondary, not primary, but secondary, tertiary, and self-made conversations on Telegram, uh, deep in uh, Signal, uh, deep in uh, uh, the, the dark web, uh, a as well as in um, various and sundry federated um, social media spaces such as 
uh, what is it called? Not a mammoth. Not a mammoth. Uh, oh, you know what I'm talking about. You probably don't. But, hey, Google, what types of mammoths are there? There are 11 types of mammoth. Here are the first three. Mammoth is primogenius, Colombian mammoth, and steppe mammoth. So, not mammoth. There's a bunch of mammoths. But, uh, there's another type of... Hey, Google, what are the kind of ancient elephants? On the website thoughtco.com, they say... Some are well Mastodon. known, such as the cartoon. So Mastodon is the uh, federated platform that a lot of people are having conversations in. And, of course, there's also YouTube. But, honestly, 99% of YouTube are just people doing things on their own account, like in the same way that they did at the beginning of blogging. Um, I mean, like I said in my blog post... Uh, I was a teenage Russian troller. I think that's what it was called. You can, anybody can do it. There's zero barrier to entry, but there have been enough people have, uh, people trust who they trust. The fact that they trust Tim pool and the fact that they trust Joe Rogan. And then the fact that they trust Jimmy Dore and not, um, you know, not Stephen Colbert or Rachel Maddow, or Fauci, or anybody, is is the bed uh, that you made and that you need to sleep in. Uh, there is a contempt for people who don't write, ha have the right clout. There is contempt for people who are in the wrong cast. And there is a belief that, that the tactics that might have, you know, um, you need to use the tactics that you used in high school uh, though you probably didn't have game, and once you get into college, everybody's like you. But when you're in co when you're in high school, that's the real world. And for example, I was not in the National Merit Scholarship. I was barely in the on the dean's list. Um, but I did okay in in high school. But I was good looking. I was blonde. I was uh, sporty, etc. I was well spoken. I wasn't uh, shy. I could do public speaking. I was. Uh, I made fun of myself and all those other things. So uh, I was able to just sort of waltz in at seventeen and steal the student body presidency, based on love bombing and and postering and so forth. And I cut in on people who had been committed to student body government since they were seventh grade, right? I went ahead and came flouncing in and took, you know, basically took Hillary's presidency. I took Biden's presidency and they deserve that. They not only did they put the work in, but they knew the job. They want to do the job. They want to do right by the school. They wanted the school to function correctly. And I just came in with a charm offens offensive, promised a bunch of stuff that I didn't even know I could promise, had a killer speech, smiled, made promises, knew my audience since I was Howley. I was extremely sensitive as to what people needed to hear and then closed the deal. Uh, it was so Trumpian. I can't even tell you how Trumpian it was. It was the most Trumpiest Trumpian thing in the world, and I ended up getting uh, deposed. But it was great for my college uh, applications, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know the job, and I didn't really care about school dances and things like that. So it turned out well, and my buddy Chuck Norton, Charles Norton, who was smarter, handsomer, buffer, cooler than I was, and had literally lived in Hawaii his entire life, um, got the job. So we both got to put student body president of St. Louis School into our, into our college application. Um, but I recommend that if you are a politico, I recommend that if you are um, a, a strategist, an activist, 
anything, you really need to read the Clue Train Manifesto. You need to buy it off of Amazon, or you need to go to the thecluetrainmanifesto.com and read it all down uh, online. Um, if I have the time this year, next year, I might go ahead and write a uh, polit a politico version of the Clue Train Manifesto, or I'm actually I'm going to start writing blog posts about how the Clue Train Manifesto should be reconfigured to be used in political and governmental hearts and minds, and why what people are doing right now, and the fact that they're doubling down and tripling down and, and making threats, and they're just actually digging themselves deeper into the mud, because at the end of the day, no matter what you do, in order to force what you think should be happening with the arc of justice, at the end of the day, you will be accountable to federal, local, and national courts and the court of public opinion. And you will go down as being the most unpopular. You might even go down uh, as being draconian or, um, yeah, draconian, uh, tyrannical. Um, well, I did it for the good of humanity. I did it for the good of America. Well, that's exactly what Adolf Hitler said when he looked in the mirror. So be careful in your attempt to make the salt of the earth denizens of the world who now have as much capability of publishing, sharing, communicating, uh, and podcasting as you do, if not more, uh, because nobody watches cable news anymore, nobody listens to the radio, and nobody reads the newspaper, and those are the three things that your your prestige-seeking missiles are constantly aiming towards, right? You would rather die than be a blogger. You'd rather die than be a podcaster. You'd rather die than be a vlogger, right? And those are the three most important channels in the history of uh, modern channel time. You're not prestigious unless you have a corner office at the New York Times. You didn't make it unless you are on MSNBC or the Nightly News. And you are a garbage person unless you're on NPR or uh, some variation thereof. Because podcasts are for basement dwellers and denizens who have mommies bringing them pizza and who blah, blah, blah. So... There you go. I don't know if I said anything, but I think uh, at the end of the day, you really need to read the Clue Train Manifesto. Uh, you also need to read the book Naked Conversation. Hey, Google, what is the book Naked Conversation about? According to Wikipedia, Naked Conversations, How Blogs Are Changing the Way Businesses Talk with Customers, is a book written by Robert Scoble and Shell Israel, published in 2006 by John Wiley and Sons. The book is about how blogs, bloggers and the blogosphere is changing how businesses communicate with their consumers and other stakeholders. So, it's important to read that book, Naked Conversations, and it's important to read that book, and then come to the conclusion that in lieu of blogs, don't let that get in your way. In lieu of blogs, you need to think about podcasts. You need to think about SEO. You need to think about counter messaging. You need to think about counter advertising. In that world, you need to, you need to be on YouTube. You need to be on the other tubes. You need to be um, where people are. Consider a message board. Consider, consider being deep in social media, not just having a social media account uh, and a social media manager, but being active in that space, taking a personal interest and not just signing off on message models and uh, et cetera. So uh, Naked Conversation and Clue Train Manifesto, I will go into them more. I just haven't read them in 10 years. And so after I read them, I'll go into more detail. I'll have notes and all that fun stuff. I just really wanted to bring it back into the fore. So if you're listening to me, I appreciate your time and energy. I'm going to go back right now to do a TLDR because now I know what the uh, show is about. 
and I'll talk to you soon. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always ask me. I'll tell you how to reach me in the next segment. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast Season 3, Episode D, yes, Episode D, uh, D, Episode uh, 10, um, and all those other things. My name's Chris Abraham. You can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can call me at plus one country code 202-352-5051. That'll go to my signal, but that'll also, uh, uh, comme on dit, uh, that'll also go to my telegram, my WhatsApp and all those other things. You can call me, but it's going to quickly go to voicemail because that's how I roll. Unless we have a date, we can make a date at Calendly, uh, dot com slash Chris Abraham slash 15, let's say. You can leave your hat on. Uh, my my site is uh, chrisabraham.com. My home site for this podcast is on anchor.fm, anchor.fm slash chrisabraham. Uh, but you can find me on Spotify, on TuneIn, on iHeartRadio. You can find me on YouTube, I think, if I haven't been brought down for medical misinformation. You can find me uh, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Like I said, youtube.com slash Chris Abraham. You can find me on Twitter, at Chris Abraham, Instagram, at Chris Abraham. You can find me... Uh, somewhere on TikTok, I think it's Abraham, Christopher Abraham may be there, not very active. I'm on Instagram, at Chris Abraham, I'm repeating myself, and that's it. Chris at Abraham.su is my email, that's the best way to reach me, and I look forward to working for you. Oh, before you go, please go to your app, to my podcast rate it, review it, and then go to any other podcast platform that you use. Uh, go to Chris Cast, rate it, and review it. Give me stars, thumbs up. Maybe go to Apple Podcasts. Uh, maybe go to Stitcher. Maybe go to um, Spotify or TuneIn or Google Podcasts. And I really appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.